Almost every sewing machine is sold with at least four to five presser feet, yet the average sewist or quilter uses an average of two feet for all of their stitching. Somehow, with a feet hidden away in an accessory box, we tend to forget about them. Welcome to Fancy Footworks 2, a Sewing with Nancy sequel, showcasing the uses of presser feet. The bias binding foot is our first feature, designed to assist in the stitching of bias tape on the edge of fabric. This unique design aids in this sometimes tricky task. Fancy Footworks 2, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Generally, when you're putting bias tape on an edge, it's a two, even sometimes three-step process. Well, with this foot that you may find in your accessory box, it can be attached with one seaming. This little sample showcases bias tape around an edge. A curved edge, and that's really a key point. If you can, if your project allows, do curve the edges. It's a lot easier to attach the bias tape to curved edges than it is to a square edge. So you may want to round it with a, a template or even a saucer. A, a cup saucer it works out really well too. Bias tape, you can buy it by the package, but not always can you get it to match your project. So if that's the case, then cut bias strips. An inch and a half wide or two inches, however wide you'd like to make your bias tape. And then you're going to make single folded and then double folded bias tape. Here's a bias tape maker and there's an opening down the center that I've started to advance the fabric through. And then as it comes out of the edge, then you start to do the pressing. Let me move my, move the fabric, or excuse me, move the maker and just advance. You notice you can't really see this, but I have the iron very close to the edge. And then let me just press a little bit more so you can get the idea. And when you're doing this at your ironing board, it will be very fast. Then after you have the single fold, then fold it one more time, meeting the folded edges together to make the double folded bias tape. And then it's ready to be inserted into the foot. But before I insert it, let me tell you about this foot. It has three parts. First of all, a C-clamp, which is rather unusual. If you pick this out of your accessory box, you may think, what does this do? Here's the C-clamp, and you can see that the bias tape is going to slip in this area. There's a side screw that adjusts the width. As I turn it, it's getting narrower. This other way will get wider so that the outer fold, or the inner fold, excuse me, will butt up against this edge. And then to make certain that the needle is getting in the correct place, you can adjust this screw next to the shank of the foot. There are measurements that are imprinted on the C-clamp. They're in millimeters, or excuse me, centimeters. So depending upon the width of your bias tape, you could set that, but I just usually do it visually. Then you insert before, I like to do this really before I put this on, in my, on my machine, insert the bias tape in the C-clamp and then it fits right within that configuration. I have the edge a little bit too narrow, so I'm going to, how about turning it the other way? There we go. And it fits so that the outer inner fold, excuse me, is adjusted next to the interior. I already have this on my machine, a sample on my machine. I have a quilting needle put on here because I'm working with thicker fabric. I'm using all-purpose thread, as I mentioned, quilting needle a straight stitch. Now I have the presser foot raised so that I can glide my project through the opening. And a little bit easier to do when you're not talking. There we go. I have it positioned and let's look at the underside. You can kind of see that it's wrapped around 
And then as I lower the foot, I'm going to do one more checking. I'm going to check visually. I can see that my needle is going to align just to the right of that fold. So now, just so. And as I do the stitching, it catches both the top and the bottom layer at the same time. And as I'm going around this fold, you'll see my fingers do a little fold, or the fingers are not folding, but it's aligning along the fold. And it zips around the edge, catching both the top and the lower edge at the same time. And the double fold of the bias tape is now attached with one row of stitching. Instead of aligning or sewing one half at a time, we now have two halves at a time. You can see how much easier it is with rounded corners rather than with square corners. Now, obviously, I'm not going to finish doing this whole edge. I'm just giving you the little precursor of how this works. And I'm going to check my work. Oh, it worked. Here you can see the stitching around the top, and we use contrasting thread on the underside so you can see how it caught in this area. Setup is important, and then you can stitch. Buttonholes. The word can cause palms to sweat and a heart rate to quicken. Adding buttonholes to a project has, at times, received a bad reputation without cause. My goal is to show you that buttonholes can be added without hassle. Whether you're making a very small or a very large buttonhole, they're all made in the same manner. And I'd like to show you how to make traditional buttonholes as well as corded buttonholes using the feet that come with your machine or perhaps a, mach a foot that you'd like to buy that is an accessory. Mo almost all feet, buttonhole feet, have the same kind of apparatus, a sliding tray, a gripper on the underside so that it does not slip on the fabric, and then adjustable area for the button. The button is placed in first in the back of the tray, and then the shank is moved to meet the button. As you can see on the side, I would loosen the screw, meet it to the foot, and then tighten. The operative word coming next is test. You have to test a buttonhole to make sure that this is the right length for this particular button with a shank. On some other feet, you may have a tray in the back where you meet the button into the space. Same kind of concept. But you may have a tray where the button doesn't fit. It's maybe too large. And in that instance, I just take a little piece of paper, wrap it around the button, mark a mark at the lower side and then again at the lower side. And then on an adjustable tray, again, you can test a little bit later, but lay this in the back and you'll be able to do this a little bit better when you're on a flat surface, but adjust the screw so that the buttonhole length fits within the tray. Again, test. I spend more time testing buttonholes than in the actual application onto a garment because once you get it the right size with the correct fabric, you're good to go. Use interfacing on one layer of your fabric and then stabilizers. Very important to use stabilizers. On medium to heavyweight fabrics, I always add a stabilizer wash away on the top. This is a cotton. I probably wouldn't need it, but I placed it there so I would remember to tell you about that. A tearaway stabilizer on the underside and then interfacing in the fabric. When I first started teaching sewing, there weren't stabilizers. I used adding machine tape. This works so much better. Now, I'll snap on my foot onto the machine and then set it up according to your manual. And I've attached or I have selected a buttonhole stitch. And I'm going to make this buttonhole right in this position. And you'll, you would mark on your, on your fabric where the buttonhole would begin and end, or begin. You don't really need the ending spot because you've measured it using the button. And this is why you test. Because a shank or different fabrics, you could have need totally different lengths. This is obviously an automatic button hole on my machine, but you may find at times that you, you might need to 
adjust or at least control the stitch at each of the settings. You'll just have to follow your manual, but that way you'll be able to open this. And we'll open it in just a few seconds, but I'd like to show you how to make a corded buttonhole at, the, at this point and use matching thread. You can buy cording or gimp. Sometimes your instruction book will call for gimp. I've never seen gimp labeled in a fabric store, so I just make my own. And I grab the bobbin thread and the top thread that comes with the machine, and I'm going to make a little shorter length, make six strands or three lengths of thread and kind of cut them and then twist them slightly together. Now set your machine for a zigzag stitch and use a, the traditional foot. And here you can see a close-up of I'm just zigzagging over the threads, the whole length of thread so that I have matching cording. It's really easy. Then on your foot, on your foot you'll find that there are toes. You have a foot, you gotta have toes. So there's a single toe in the back and sometimes there's a triple toe in the front or a place where you can tie your cording, which I have done. And then snap this on. After you've loaded it, lower the foot and get ready to do another buttonhole. Now I have this cording kind of long, a little longer than I need right now, but I'll just show you that I can make the next buttonhole and it zigzags over the cording. And because it's the same thread color, it will just make a heavier weight of thread, or buttonhole, excuse me, more durable, perfect for medium to heavyweight fabrics. So here's another sample that I made prior, and I'll show you how to remove the top layer of the stabilizer. And then to cut open the buttonhole, there are two options, seam ripper. Score the interior, place the point of the seam ripper at one end and then through the middle and cut. Go to the other side, point down to the middle and find the middle and cut. There we go and now you've cut open your buttonhole. We can remove the threads of the cording and then to use a buttonhole cutter and block I'd like to show you how to work with that. Place this on the table and then place half of the buttonhole over the board and cut. And then flip it over and place the other half. With these two cutting techniques, there isn't any way of cutting beyond the buttonhole. And these are my favorite buttonhole techniques. Narrow strips often slip to one side or the other during the sewing process. Use the sequins and ribbon foot to tame unruly trims like sequin tape, ribbon, or even rickrack during that stitching process. This whole three-part series is on presser feet, and when you have specialty trims from uh, evening wear to home decorating, you may find that these trims slip and slide. So rather than gluing or basting them down, there is a foot that's designed to handle that. And this particular foot is a unique configuration. I always like to take a close look at it so that you can un understand what's going to happen. Rather than having two toes, the right toe is completely eliminated and this accessory guide is attached near the sidebar or on the sidebar and you can see the opening that's allowed for the trim whether it's ribbon or trim or little sequins. Now your trim may not fit in that opening so there are other sizes that you can screw on to attach and this little visual shows you here we even have a double side for two trims or a much wider trim width about three-eighths of an inch and there are even additional ones so that you can see that you can get it to match the size of your trim. And then you're going to either straight stitch or zigzag it into place. And I'm going to show you zigzagging because, which I think is some of the most difficult things, really not that hard, but trim to sew is a sequin tape. For example, formal wear or holiday wear. Now with sequins, pet it like a cat, going downward so that the sequins are lying one on top of the other in the downward position rather than in the upward position because otherwise the points will get caught in the foot so it's going to go in the wrong direction. So pet downward like you're petting a cat and you insert it into the opening of the accessory guide. 
I've already started to stitch this on my machine and I would recommend that you'd use monofilament thread, clear thread, when zigzagging over this. And you have to do a zigzag for this particular trim and that's what we're going to, sh I'm going to show you on the screen and that is I have a wide zigzag. For this particular trim, I needed that widest width. And then you could adjust the length as you're making a sample. So I have the pet of the sequins going toward me and you can see it, they fit right into the opening and I can change the curve, I could sew straight. I'm using contrasting thread so you can see what happens with, as the zigzag couches over the edge. But it's kind of a unique way of doing stitching and you can meander and I'm just aimlessly doing some stitching here but when I cut the threads let me show you what happens. And as I pull this up and out through the opening, you'll see that the thread straddles over and you can manipulate the trim with this foot. One of the most common requests on my blog is how to get the courage to attempt free motion quilting techniques. Trust me, you don't need courage, just practice. Here's a way to practice where the stitches are completely camouflaged by the textured fabric. It's a perfect testing ground for the specialty technique using a quilting foot. The quilting foot can look quite unique depending upon your sewing machine. It has an opening, a large opening, so that the stitches, you can see where you're stitching. The shank of the foot, believe it or not, is shorter than the traditional length. The length from the shank to the lower edge of the foot is shorter because it will ride above usually quilted fabric, batting, backing, and a top layer. And with stippling, the technique is to sew little ends like puzzle pieces or light bulb shapes very neatly or sometimes not neatly. It's not that important. You just need to practice. And this technique works so well making a textured fabric. You can later camouflage the stitching because we're going to give texture to the fabric. So rather than having a top layer and batting and backing, we just have the top layer and for this embellishing, embellishing technique, a texturizing fabric that shrinks in size when steam and heat are applied. First, the foot, how to work with free motion quilting. Let's check the settings of the machine. This machine tells me that I'm going to use an open foot. Your foot, quilting foot, may vary from the looks of the ones I'm using, but the most important thing is that you're going to lower the feed dogs, this little button lowers the feed dogs and I have set for a straight stitch. The length doesn't matter because you're going to be controlling the length of the stitch by having your hands on either side of the foot and guiding the fabric underneath. So when doing the stitching, you usually are going to have many more layers. I just have these two narrow layers. So this is going to make a little bit more of noise than traditionally you would find out. But I'm going to stitch in the relief areas, not the motif areas and as I'm sewing I'm just going to be making little end pieces. You sew relatively quickly but you move the fabric slowly. It's kind of like patting your tummy and rubbing your tummy and patting your head. You know that little technique it's kind of hard. You got to think a little bit differently. But don't worry when this technique, don't worry about neatness because the stitches are going to be camouflaged. So you stitch around all these little areas and I'll just show you. I'm not the best stippler in the world, but there aren't any stippling pleats, so I don't worry about it. I just do this little stitching, these little ends that you can see. Now with the machine, I mean with the technique, not the machine, with the technique when you have that textured fabric underneath, you just place it on the ironing board and then lift your iron on top, just give it a lot of steam and it will automatically, well, watch it shrink. And you may then want to do just all over. It takes a little bit of time but it's fun to watch. It's kind of one of those sewing magic shows. So I have in this instance done the texturizing and then look what happens to the right side. All that stippling has allowed you to create texture and learn the stippling technique all in one swoop.
Restoring Hope Through Sewing, that's the intent of today's featured organization. This restoration is accomplished by teaching sewing skills that will enable the students to support themselves and their children. This all takes place halfway around the world in Ghana with the help of enthusiastic volunteers from Point Hope. Please welcome Leslie Gemignani. She's here to explain how we can restore hope through sewing in Africa. Welcome, Hi, Leslie. Nancy. Thank you for having me on. Um, we have an incredible program that we're starting over there. They've already had a year of being taught uh, sewing, batiking. They're learning this to empower themselves to become these young ladies who are absolutely wonderful uh -huh. to give their children and themselves a lives, a reason for being. Yeah. And this place is in Ghana, and it's a refugee camp. It is. It's a refugee camp that's about to close. It's uh, been 20 years, I believe, in the making with this camp, and now there's 22,000 people are going to be misplaced, uh, homeless. Um, our founder, Delilah Renee, she uh, went over there and found 40 acres of land, and she's started a village. And in this it's, village, they have many facets. And what we're going to talk about is the classes that you're teaching people, mm -hmm. two types, sewing and batik making. Yes, yes. And you make batiks that can be personalized. In any way, <laughs> shape, form, uh -huh. any designs. And the batik making is done in, of course, the 100 degree temperature. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> it's not uh, for the faint-hearted, is it? Not even a little bit. No, uh -huh. no. And yet, these ladies, when you see the pictures, you'll be amazed. And they stamp with wax yes, re they do. reliefs on the on the muslin fabric. On the fabric, yes. They heat up, heat up the. They heat everything in boiling, boiling wax. They put their stamps into uh -huh. the wax. They place them onto these fabrics. After the wax is dry, they put it into the the dye, and it comes out with these absolutely Lovely. beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful colors. And then they have to rinse designs. out the, the wax oh, so yes. that, that you can see the relief uh, area. But what beautiful boutiques that they, they are. have. They are. They are absolutely beautiful. And you told me that on Fridays at the at the camp, they, everyone wears a uniform. Yes, this is our Friday uniform. The children wear it, the adults wear it. This is their day of school, their day of, um, I guess, welcoming Point Hope into their lives because it's made such a big difference so far. You know, and this is just, it is a voice for forgotten children. It's wonderful. And everybody looks adorable wearing a cloak. <laughs> I'm sure they, they do. really do. And one of, you're going to be going to Ghana soon, and you're yes. going to be teaching sewing. Yes, I'm hoping to be able to come up with a second year curriculum with them uh -huh. um, to help them finish what they've learned to do. Um, right now, they're learning to sew on hand-cranked sewing sure. machines. And anybody who knows about those know how, knows how difficult that is. Uh, and these young ladies, they have done a magnificent job. This is one of our tablecloths. Mm -hmm. And they've batiked it, and then they do this, this uh, silk, sc silk screening. Thank you very much. On the top. And then this yes. is a symbol that you have through Point Hope and yes. through Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes. The symbol is accept God, A-C-C, <laughs> accept uh -huh. God, because uh, with, without God, nothing is possible. And they, they live in dire straits, and yes, you are giving do. them some encouragement and learning abilities. We're or, trying to mm -hmm. teach them to be able to, on the sewing aspect of it, we're trying to teach them how to do patenting, how to do um, um, finishing work. They sure. have nothing. These women have nothing. They, they, uh, need, they need sewing machines. They need fabric. They need these things so that they can build what they've got going. And you mentioned a really nice thing is that we all sew and quilt for creative purposes. And, yes. And this is sometimes something where they have value because mm -hmm. they can express their creativity just like we do. Oh, they do, and, and it's amazing. I, I fell in love with this. It's adorable. Uh -huh. This is a tooth fairy pillow, and <laughs> these are some of the different colors and some of the different batiks that they've used to make them, and it's they're just absolutely and adorable. And they certainly don't have tooth fairies there. No, they don't. <laughs> they really don't. They had no idea yeah. what they were. But and so it's amazing showing all of these, seeing the detail that goes into uh -huh. it, the child, the hair. It's just beautiful. I love it. And these women, they they have learned this. They're learning making bags. We've, we're hoping to start something where we can use 
the colors from different states sure. and making like a backpack. Sure. So what what a wonderful way of giving hope through sewing and through fabric making. And thank you for telling oh, us, Leslie, about Thank you about so much Point for having hope. us here. Thank you. I appreciate You're it. You're very welcome. Yeah. And if you'd like to learn more about Point Hope, you simply go to nancyzeman.com where you'll find streaming videos of all our programs, our inter my interview with Leslie. Just click on Nancy's Corner, the 2600 series, and you will be able to find information on Point Hope and how perhaps you could be involved in this great program. I hope you'll join us next time. Thank you for joining us on Fancy Footworks Part 3. Bye for now. Nancy's fully illustrated Fancy Footworks 2 workbook includes a three-ring binder with laminated instructions for all the feet featured during this three-part series. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the workbook, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2605. Order item number BK2605, Fancy Footworks 2, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.